Hi, welcome back to Flute Techniques. Um, today I'm going to um, go through a set of slides uh, about parts of the flute and assembly and posture. And I also thought of something that I forgot to tell you um, in my last video for the last class about piccolos. So I found um, an old brochure for uh, piccolos. This is decades old, but it has some nice pictures of uh, different types of piccolos that you might see. So I wanted to show you, because I had mentioned the baby flute, that some piccolos do come in an um, all silver model. Um, if you see that there, um, these are examples of piccolos that are all silver and have a little lip plate and they just look like a baby flute. Um, I don't own a silver piccolo, but if you uh, inherit some instru instruments in a band program at a high school, you may see some piccolos that look like this. One thing you want to um, double check with these instruments, if they're in good working order, they can be okay for students to use in marching band. But sometimes older piccolos, um, either silver or wooden, can be pitched in D flat uh, rather than in C. Um, and uh, that piccolo is going to be very out of tune and the intonation isn't going to work because it's going to be a half step off. So you do want to check the intonation of those instruments and make sure um, that you don't have a D flat piccolo there. All piccolos in this day and age should be in C for students in high schools. The back of this brochure um, also has some pictures of um, different configurations and materials of piccolo. The ones on the top here are made of wood similar to the one that I own that I showed you. Um, and then down here, these are plastic piccolos. Um, and you can't on the brochure tell any difference when you see the black instrument. When you hold them in your hand, you can tell a slight difference between the wood and the plastic. Um, and you'll also sometimes see piccolos with a black body, but a silver head joint, this combination. And, and that body can be either plastic or wood, and then the head joint can be metal. Um, so there are many different configurations of piccolos. I wanted to show you the different materials they can be made out of and how, how they look. And as long as they're in good working order and play reasonably in tune, um, they can be used by students. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to my slides here and talk through some things about uh, parts of the flute. This slide um, is important and has all of the terms that I would like you to know for uh, parts of the flute. And you may want to uh, pause the video and just copy down all of these terms that are by the green arrows because this is something I'll ask you to repeat in an assignment and it's usually on my final test. Um, so you see here the three parts of the flute, um, the head joint here and the foot joint, which is what goes on the end of the flute, and the body joint is along the bottom of the image here. So the flute is named after parts of the body, um, head, body, and foot joints. Sometimes you will see this large joint at the bottom, the body, what I call the body joint, listed as the middle joint in some um, illustrations or books. That's okay, but you will find that most flutists call it the body joint. Um, and some other small terms here that I would like you to know. The crown is here on the end of the head joint, and I'll show you that in a minute. The uh, tone hole also can be called the embouchure hole, is the hole that we blow across to produce the sound. The lip plate is the large plate here that you place on your chin. And you'll notice that one side of it is very large. Um, and flat and one side is very small and it is the large surface here that you put against your chin and that helps you um, have the flute going in the right direction. Um, okay and then on the the body joint down here at the bottom the top of the body joint where the uh, head joint inserts into the body is called the barrel and this is where you can safely hold the instrument during assembly or anytime you're holding the instrument really. I'm going to make myself bigger here and show you some of these um, things on my flute. Here's my head joint and you can see that the lip plate is um, small on one end and a large flat surface on the other end. It is this large flat surface that goes onto your chin um, and the flute then extends out to my right. If you put it the wrong way there's not enough uh, metal or material here. You can blow into it 
to make a sound, uh, but the flute would be going the wrong direction. All flutes, um, Western concert flutes, mostly um, in this country are gonna be going to the right. You can have a custom made one that goes to the left side. Um, I wanna show you the, the crown. This is, doesn't hurt to take this off, but it's something that students shouldn't play with a lot. But this comes off the end of the head joint. There it is. Looks like that. And um, the end of the head joint has a little screw in it and you can see a metal plate inside there. Um, so what's at the top of the head joint is a cork. It's about the size of a wine cork. It has a metal plate on either end and then a screw coming out of it and this crown attaches then um, onto the head joint. And this should be um, turned and screwed in until it just stops and is tight and really be left alone. If um, you were able to move the cork in or out or this crown keeps spinning and you can't uh, reach a point where it stops, that means something is wrong with your cork inside the head joint and you need to take it to a repair shop. The cork should be very firm and very tight in there. Um, okay, and I wanted to show you the barrel on my flute. This is um, the, the safest place to hold the um, body when you take it out of the case. And I'm gonna go back to the next slide and then come back and show you some things in a minute here. So let's move down to this picture. Yeah, show you a picture of the instrument in the case. And what I'm trying to highlight here with the green rectangle um, is I wanna show you that the busy parts of the flute are all in the center of the case. So if you look at the head joint here, the lip plate is towards the center of the case and it's inside the green rectangle. And there's nothing going on over here on the end of the head joint, it's just a plain tube. If you look at the body joint, okay, the um, long pinky key here that extends down into the middle of the case is here in the middle. Um, and there's not much going on. I see the barrel over here on the side. It doesn't have any rods and keys on it. And if you look at the foot joint, there is about an inch of tube here that has nothing on it on the end. That goes to the outside of the case. And these pinky keys right here are in the center of the case. So in the center of the case, you have um, more keys and rods and lip plates and things. And that helps with placing the instrument into the case. I'm just gonna show you my case here. Um, my flute, again, you'll see that the lip plate is here, the foot joint keys, and this pinky key coming down. Sometimes, because when you're holding the flute, you're going to be holding it this way, and then students want to just put it straight in the case, and this is wrong. It doesn't fit in the case right, and that pinky key is facing up, and it needs to turn the other way to go into the case. Um, okay, so that shows how the instrument goes into the case. Um, you should always pick up the, uh, the, the body joint by the barrel, remember that, and you should always pick up the um, foot joint by this um, end here, the end of the flute that has no rods and keys, and that's where you can safely hold it. Okay, I'll talk more about assembly in a minute. Let's look at the next slide. Okay. Um, this shows someone properly holding um, the head joint and the barrel of the body to insert them together um, without bending any rods and keys. Okay, and um, I'm going to make myself big again here and show you that I hold the uh, body of the flute by the barrel and then I take the head joint and insert it. <laughs> switch hands here so holding by the barrel and I take the head joint and slide that into the barrel um, and then when I assemble the foot joint I am holding the foot joint by the end not gripping any rods and keys and you see I'm still holding the barrel of the flute and putting the two parts together in this way you will see a lot of videos on YouTube where people grab the flute and hold it here on rods and keys and I'm gonna do this gently and are putting the head joint in and out in this way. 
I, I really disagree with this. This is just a recipe for bending rods and keys and needing repair. So you should always be holding the flute firmly during assembly in places where there are no rods and keys. It's a little, this one is really hard for students to hold by the end of the foot joint to assemble and hold by the barrel and get this, but it's a good habit to have. If you grab the instrument like this and are twisting parts, you're gonna bend rods and keys. So that's really important. Okay. Let's see what I have on my next slide here. Um, this shows uh, someone properly, <laughs> move myself out of the way, properly assembling the foot joint onto the end of the body, holding it without bending any rods and keys. And you can't see their left hand, but I'm certain that the left hand, this looks like a repair person, is holding it by the barrel as he puts the foot joint on the instrument. Okay, let's go to the next slide. I like this slide. Um, it shows alignment um, pretty well. So for beginners, you generally want to align the tone hole or embouchure hole of the head joint with the keys on the body. So see this red line here. The general rule is you try to line up this hole with this first key, or it should basically be in line with the keys on the body. Um, the truth is that as you develop your sound, some players turn it in or out a little bit depending on their anatomy of their chin and lips and how they produce a good sound. Uh, but the general rule is to just uh, line those up. And I'm going to show you that really quick. Um, that you want to insert the head joint, not all the way. You can put it all the way, but then you need to pull it out a quarter inch to a half inch to be... Uh, reasonably in tune and not too sharp and you want um, the embouchure hole to be roughly in line here and you'll see stu students uh, and professional flutists peering down the body of their flute to see if that's in line okay um, and now I want to show you the foot joint let's go back to the slide here the foot joint um, should be a caddy corner um, in a way that's comfortable for the hand. So what you're going to see here is that this rod, the rod is the long piece of metal that goes along the flute and holds um, the, the keys. Um, the rod of the foot joint intersects the keys of the body. Okay, and you will see that the rods on the body intersects or points at the middle of this pinky key on the foot joint. So I'm going to show you common mistakes with assembling the foot joint that I see in class. The most common one is this, that students put together the flute. Looks good, right? Looks like all the keys are right in a row and in line. But this is not comfortable for the right hand to reach these pinky keys. It's very hard to get there. So the proper assembly is for the foot joint to be like this. I'm bringing that rod so that it points into the middle of the body keys. And likewise, the rod of the body intersects this um, pinky key here. Another common one is that students want to line up the rods. <laughs> and sometimes in my first, uh, the first class where we assemble flutes, um, students will put together the instrument like this. And I can't um, then comfortably reach these keys here. So it needs to be caddy corner or what appears to be crooked. It needs to be like this, okay? Um, nothing is neat and in line. It needs to be comfortable for the hand. All right, and um, now we'll move on to the next slide here. This slide just shows, um, again, the alignment that the embouchure hole should be roughly in line with the keys of the body. Okay, and we'll move on here. Here's some photos um, that show proper alignment of the foot joint. Over here, you can see the rods of the body intersecting this teardrop-shaped pinky key on the foot joint. This is the first key of the foot joint here. Same down here, the rod intersects the foot joint. And the, the rod of the foot joint is pointing at the keys of the body. Uh, likewise here, this person is assembling the foot joint and body. I don't like that his fingers are on the keys there. Um, but you can see that the foot joint is in the proper position. Okay, do I have another slide? I think that's it. Um, great. Um, thanks very much, guys. I probably forgot some things I wanted to tell you, but I'll add them next time that I make a video for you. I have a few more videos that I want you to watch and then some questions that I'd like you to answer 
uh, following those in one PDF to look at. So have a great day, guys. Bye.